Well, the Dark R Rally is not fun at all. It's the hardest race in the world probably for amateurs and even professionals alike. Well, my memory of Dark R Rally, oh, well, it was two weeks of living hell. <laughs> I've been riding motorcycles since I was 16, but still, even then, you know, I'm not a professional, and I didn't expect that race to be that hardcore. I mean, it was just like, from the beginning to the end, there was no moment where it was actually enjoyable whatsoever. Peer pressure was one of the biggest aspects that actually got me going, because, you know, being Japanese, you know, covered by the media, and because, you know, not many Japanese riders actually participated in Dakar Rally, and even an amateur like me, every year, maybe there's two or three participants back then. Now, you know, there hasn't been a Japanese rider racing that much these days, you know, maybe once in a couple years. So this is kind of a funny story, but actually I had a G-Shock on my handle, handlebar. I was always worried, you know, that my bike's clock would break down or something would break down. So, you know, the G-Shock actually has a watch and a compass. So if anything happens, you know, we could use that as a backup. So that was kind of a, you know, uh, I don't know, Omamori. It's always relaxing to think, you know, if worse comes to worse, there's something that I can get, a tool, extra tool that I can use. The G-Shock that I carried with me back then was just minimal, very minimal. So if I had this one, you know, it would have been totally different because you know, there's altimeters, thermometers. The digital compass on this is amazing. Think of desert as being totally dry, but it's not true. We actually had to ride on top of muds as well. So definitely, it would, would have been nice to have the latest G-Shock back then. <laughs> I wish I had this one. <laughs> no, but even that model that I took with me was sufficient for the purpose it served. So, yes. Um, even on EMTV, I actually wear a watch. And as I told you, it's nice to have a backup just in case something happens to your cell phone and you don't know where you are. To have a altimeter or like digital compass, actually it's comforting to know that you have that with you because you never know what might happen. And also, you know, since I'm a photographer, I wanted to take a lot of photos. You know, I wanted to show people how hard it is. But I didn't have enough, I don't know, time or mentally I wasn't capable of actually stopping for a photograph. I could have done it when I think about it, but I was just so in a rush, you know. That's the unfortunate thing, is like I wasn't able to shoot more photos to show the world what it's like. But I took actually one video, I was able to find a small camera that I could put on my helmet. The hardest area is Qatar, the place where I feel like Every 20 meters, 30 meters, I kept on falling because the sand was so difficult. Yeah, so that was, that was it. I'm also a big traveler. I travel around the world. Even if the phone doesn't work, you know, I, I would know, you know, I'd be able to find out what time it is, you know, location and so on. So we're totally digital dependent now, but um, you never know. You know, there, there's still situations where, you know, you're kind of off the grid. It's always comforting to have a watch like this.